Hi everyone, it is uh, Tuesday the 21st of July 2020, uh, we've, you know, we've got less than four months through till the 3rd of November, the elections, um, and so let's have a look at, the. well I'm going to have a look, sorry, at the indices, global indices and see what's happening. I'm starting off with Wall Street, very nice, excuse me, a very nice uptrend on the daily, looks very nice and bullish, found support, beautiful, on the 26,000 level, heading up towards 27 in isolation on the weekly, it doesn't look that bad, doesn't look overextended. There's technically there's no reason why this shouldn't be able to touch 27 315 that next weekly it's red because it's a weekly level as opposed to green which is a monthly level so it looks as though that's at least uh, next on the cards um, and I think what's significant is mentioning that we've had some strong monthly resistance and we've managed to push back through that we tried and failed last month we're starting to push through now I think that's significant again am I excluding the possibility that the markets can have a big move to the downside again no I'm not I'm saying that right now price action seems more likely that it wants to go up. It doesn't seem unhappy. There are no um, failed attempts or anything here. So uh, we will see. Again, S&P looking really nice. Produce some nice bullish candles. The behavior here is nice and orderly. Again, on the weekly, it's starting to enter a bit of overextended history. It's coming up to all-time highs. But it really, everything else here in isolation, if you, if you hadn't watched the news and you didn't know anything about what was going on, this would be bullish. You might be wondering what happened here, but you wouldn't really be too concerned about this. Going down four hours again, four hours is relatively orderly. There's a nice little potential entry level here if price does come back down. Uh, between now and tomorrow, there might be a buying opportunity off that level of support at uh, 3230, call it, um, but certainly even down to 3250. There's a potential opportunity to keep buying. So far, all of that looking nice and uh, balanced. The NASDAQ, which has been, as I said, historically, is now, I've, I've highlighted as it's in bubble territory. It's gone parabolic. It's absolutely overextended. It's going to struggle. You can see here struggling with 11,000. Uh, if it completely goes out of whack, then my expectation is to see it hit uh, 12,000. I'm looking here at this potential rejection daily candle here. So if I just go full screen on this, uh, if this closes this way and we break the low, this could then be what is called a double top and this could then be a rejection. So what I'm going to be looking for here um, basically is a, I'm just marking it this way. Uh, let me get rid of it. No, no, that's fine. I'll leave that as this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm looking to see if I get any bearish divergence on the indicators at the bottom. So let's just do that. Let's reduce price. And so this is what we have. We have some bearish divergence between this point and this point on uh, RSI. Um, a little bit of bearish divergence here on the MACD. Okay, so bearish divergence on both. That is usually a solid, relatively reliable indicator that price is struggling. It actually doesn't mean that it's set to kind of uh, change direction now, but a double top and equal top here and divergence, bearish divergence on both indicators um, could be uh, an indication that the weekly is gonna retrace. So if we look at the weekly here, uh, if this does, and that'll mean I'm going to be looking at following uh, this low, so I'm going to maximize price again, and it means I'm going to be watching this low over here. So I'm just going to mark that low, and that's really where my tension is going to be over the next couple of days. It usually implies on the daily that there'll be a weekly retracement, which 10,000 is primo. That would be perfect. Here's the previous level of support resistance. 10,000 is beautiful. So this would be a very nice area for price to come back to. And if it did that, it might manage to avoid this kind of parabolic, potentially shock to the system correction that is likely to happen if we don't calm down a bit here. Uh, and so that's really my only concern. I would be very surprised if the NASDAQ had a big drop or a correction on the weekly and the others didn't have a similar correction because the NASDAQ right now tends to is the leader of the group. Uh, so let's have a look at that. Let's see what happens. Um, this could close by tonight, could close as a green candle. So this whole scenario that I've just spoken about could go away. This is actually surprising me. I'm really expecting it to attempt to get through that. But 
so this is what I'm looking for. So if I do, we do get a double top today, we could get, there's a bit of bearish divergence, but again, a correction is coming. There's no doubt there's a correction coming in the coming weeks or potentially in the next couple of months. Um, so I was just looking for this to be a smaller correction. Um, and so that's what I'll uh, have, I'll keep an eye on. What I might just do is update the, with a with a screen grab rather than a video. But a pullback on the weekly back down to 10,000 would be healthy. Very nice and healthy. Let's have a look at the Russell 2000. Nice uptrend, broken out of consolidation. Yeah, beautiful retest of support. Looks fantastic on the weekly. Looks pretty good on the monthly. So far, this is all good. Again, I'm prepared for us to have a bigger correction. It's just that as I look at it right now, these all look relatively bullish. So for example, if I just jump right down to the Tokyo sessions and look at Australia, uh, are they bullish or bearish? Well, they weren't bearish, that's for sure. They certainly are bullish. They are encountering, you can see there's definite some kind of resistance over here. Again, let's have a look. Let's uh, reduce price and see what's going on here. MACD is fine. Uh, I beg your pardon. RSI is fine. MACD is flattening out a bit. So in isolation, that one is saying I'm pretty happy. Uh, Nikkei uh, trending up it slowly. Yeah, it's not fantastic, but it's got strong resistance up here. It's not, in other words, it hasn't fallen through the floor. Even the Hang Seng, which is in more of a downtrend, um, is still kind of trying to trend to the upside. It's got an uptrend on the weekly. It's got a nice bullish candle here. If it was really weak and really bearish, it would just be showing that, and it's not. Um, in the future, that might come about, but at this point, for the next few days, it doesn't really appear to be showing any of that. So also just noting the DAX, uh, Germany 13 now running into historical uh, resistance here, about 13,200, which is along these highs up here on the monthly. That could also potentially do it, but so far the trend is nice and healthy. So there have been some good money-making opportunities here that I, I took in the last couple of, uh, last week or so. Um, and let's see how that rejection is. But, you know, we're, we're really only a couple of hours into the US session today. So how it finishes, uh, there's still several, several hours left. Probably at least five hours left until we kind of get somewhere with that. Um, going back up, EU stocks. Also, again, look at this level here. There could be some rejection at this point, maybe. Uh, there could be something that I have to kind of keep an eye on if there's some bearish divergence between that. But again, in isolation, it looks doesn't look weak. It just looks like it's maybe not as bullish as the US. And almost certainly, I think it's fair for me to comment on this as well. There's some serious or strong. 6,300 will be the number uh, in terms of resistance on the FTSE 100. In isolation on the weekly, it looks bullish. So if I look at this, that looks really good. It looks like it's done a nice swing low and it wants to carry on, but it is definitely on the daily is struggling a bit with this as well. There is, uh, there's still some key resistance further up. So there's room, there's room for it to go. And that's a nice bullish candle, bullish candle on 6,000. So in isolation, again, there is sort of call it 60, 40 bullish. Um, uh, well, again, as I said, so I guess what I'm going to do now is sum it up. Yes, of course, I'm including the idea that we could have a big correction. Uh, it'll be something that we'll be able to see, but we've got only two or three days left of the week. Uh, we are looking relatively bullish across the board. I'm going to keep an eye on the NASDAQ. That'll be my leader. If this closes green, then it just disregards that. But I'll be keeping an eye on the previous uh, previous lows to see if we break those. Then I'll start to look for shorting opportunities. But looking at it as it stands now, it is not showing signs of weakness. It is looking neutral to bullish, depending on whichever index I have a look at. And the Asian sessions, the Tokyo sessions, can often be a good indicator of that. Uh, and they seem to be fine today. There's no signs of anything happening there. Um, and so, of course, yeah, I guess tomorrow's another day. But this is what I'll be looking at uh, for uh, the next few, uh, certainly for this week.